Sí. Illa illa illa. So we'll do one thing. We'll do one thing. We'll set the computer for him. I'll do the keyboard from the so down there. அப்படியா சரி சரி அப்ப இதை எடுத்துடலாம் அதுல போட்டு மந்த்லி லெக்சர் ஆஃப் தி வராஹ மிஹிரா சயின்ஸ் ஃபாரம் வித் திஸ் லெக்சர் வி ஹவ் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் ஃபைவ் இயர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் அவர் சிக்ஸ் இயர் so we thank all the audience members who have showed up uh, both in uh, for in person events and for uh, online events and all our speakers who have uh, including some repeat speakers including today's speaker who honored us by giving us lectures over the last 5 years we thought we tried this try this as an experiment for the first 6 months see how it goes so you know 6 years or starting and stepping into the 6th year is uh, feels like a big uh, achievement so we are delighted uh, we are delighted to have one of our uh, uh, another one of the most esteemed speakers of uh, madras uh, especially of madras history in this month madras madras day madras week madras month uh, shri kr narsaya uh, before i introduce the speaker let me f- say a few words about the varahamira science forum to those of you who are not familiar with it almost everybody uh, is a repeat uh, viewer but for the first timers we started this as a forum for generic programs about science and technology in madras about 5 years back because we believe that uh, while there is a large audience for generic science uh, there is uh, there are programs are being held only in technical institutions hospitals etc on several of these subjects 
and only rarely and not systematically uh, do speakers about science and technology get a public audience so we wanted to have a forum where there was a monthly lecture at least uh, as a start and uh, chennai madras has had a very long history of uh, lectures on uh, science uh, we've had world famous scientists i mean we produced two nobel laureates as you know a great mathematical genius as you know um, and several institutions of uh, science and technology have been here including a few that uh, mr narsia will mention in his speech today um, we've had nobel laureates visit uh, university of madras in the um, early 60s and so on uh, people like niels bohr um, and uh, others have visited we have several major institutions we are one of the largest medical uh, in fact our medical tourism is one of the biggest in the country uh, we have a lot of pioneering firsts i never uh, tire of saying this we are one rare city where you can go to the rooftop and see a rocket launch uh, as we recently did with the sri hrikota rockets all you need is a clear sky um, and so we are very delighted to have several speakers talk on several subjects we've had talk speakers on various subjects some of them professional some of them amateurs um, and on this very related today's topic is about the great trigonometrical survey of india which is a very interesting uh, mathematical and land survey project um, i will let the speaker talk about it in detail and uh, mr narsia has already given us a lecture in our very first year uh, he gave us a lecture on his uh, life at sea uh, he was talking about the focus of the talk was about marine engineering the uh, ships and turbines and all that but he beautifully weaved in with his own life story his career uh, certain events certain adventures that happened on the sea uh, and it uh, turned out to be a very lively program and very very well appreciated program and so we are delighted to have uh, you know one of our most esteemed speakers come and speak again uh, at this forum to start our 6th year mr narsaya as i said is a started off his career as a marine engineer in the navy uh, after several years he worked for the port of uh, visakhapatnam for a few years is uh, why he was doing this he uh, developed an interest in writing wrote a few short stories in tamil they got published in ananda vigadan and he has been writing since then in all kinds of uh, magazines newspapers in tamil and in english uh, he has uh, for, since then he started writing books mostly non fiction his book kadalodi is very famous it's a play on the word terekkadal lodi dravyam thedu he take as a sailor uh, it's a very interesting book in fact he got the he is well known as kadalodi narsaya to most people in the uh, literary world he wrote an, another marvelous book called kadal vadi vanigam that is mercantile trade of the entire history of uh, mercantile trade in india which is again an unusual book then he got interested in madras history he has written a book called madras patnam both in tamil and in english uh, he wrote a book called alavai which is a history of uh, madurai uh, most recently he re- released his own latest biography in fact he did this uh, last month i think and uh, he just crossed 90 uh, still most the one of the most energetic people that we know uh, several of his books have won several four of his books won awards four consecutive years if i remember right um and he is a very popular speaker he's been speaking about all kinds of madras related topics and other topics um uh, all over madras and all over india of course and even i'm sure he has speak, spoken abroad also he was invite he was uh, you know you have to read his autobiography to uh, read some of his adventures with unesco and cambodia and all these stories so i won't say any more uh, we will uh, uh, now have the pleasure of hearing Uh, mr narsaya speak about a very interesting historic event that happened in a project that started off in madras the trigonometrical survey india sir the podium is yours okay yeah yeah up and down என்ன பாத்துட்டு இருந்தேன் நோ ப்ராப்ளம் குட் ஈவினிங் டு ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ ஸ்பெஷல் தேங்க்ஸ் டு கோபு இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் யுலைசிங் மீ ஐ டோன்ட் நோ சம் டைம் ஆர் अदर ஐ ஃபீல் வெதர் இட் இஸ் மை செல்ஃப் ஆர் somebody else also in any case as he said my when my 
unfortunately my thinking was in english so when i started writing it was always in english words that i translated into tamil with a result that my when my first book kadalodi was reviewed in the hindu by sr govindraj and he was the principal of vaishnava college and a good reviewer in the hindu he reviewed it saying the author thinks in english and translates his thoughts into tamil with the result the book appears to be a tamil translation of an original english this is what he had written in the hindu so anyway god has been very kind to me all i can say is that uh, i have had very good life both in navy and outside and after coming to madras with good friends and people like also affectionate like badri gopu and professor swami nathan and others who have been always kind enough to ask me to do this today we are talking about this trigonometrical survey of india you will be surprised to know that many things started in madras in fact though we say railway started in bang i mean bombay bombay thana run was in 1853 long before that a railway line was built and even a train was tra- to be run it could not be run because there was some financial problem even railway should have been first metro should have been first there also whatever it is that is because english came first to metro so they started doing everything from here no why is this important this trigonometrical survey for first reason is there was a need for measurement and information of land for any ruler any ruler should know what is his area so that he can collect his dues from the people and he can also run efficiently and it was called a great game you will be surprised to know the survey was given a name as game a game why it was called a game This term is from a letter from Arthur Connolly to a friend posted in Afghanistan. Arthur Connolly was the first man to draw one small map of Afghanistan. You have a great game, a noble game before you. Why it is called a game, I will come to then. It describes the strategic rivalry between Russia and Britain in those days. I am talking about um, early 17, uh, late 17th century and early 18th century. Russia used a term tournament of shadows they used a term for knowing about the place as tournament of shadows in russia actually surveying secretly that's why it is called a game of the shady game so this mapping the great game, mapping itself is called a great game so the whole thing was known as a great game As early as 1801, Sir Paul sent a secret proposal to Napoleon. Mind you, 1640s, 39 in uh, British has had already set foot. But by uh, 18th century, British was very strong holders in India. But the Brit- um, uh, Tsar of Russia came to know that this country is really fabulous and a lot of riches. and he wanted to have a share of it so he didn't know by himself whether he will be able to win over the english because by sea they cannot win over they can only win over through land because sea definitely britain were better force he wanted to drive out the british for which he wanted the help of napoleon so that he can drive out the, uh, the um, uh, british from india over the political term it was at that time that russia started having different thinking so there was a turmoil so that didn't um, come at all so probably it would have been a different story if they had joined together mapping india it was called a game for securing power in the world by various kingdoms and the need for a survey and the execution of trigonometrical survey of india Madras was a starting point of Indian land survey. The surveys of India in the 19th century accomplished this magnificent task, though it took the whole of a century. Whole of a century, 
एयर कंडीशन करके लगना बंद हो ब्रिटिश दट रशिया वुड इनवेट थ्रू वेस्टर्न रीजन इफ इट ऑल रशिया कम्स दे विल इनवेट थ्रू द वेस्टर्न रीजन ओनली दे न्यू अबाउट इट the idea was to have information about the place so that defense could be arranged author connolly was sent author connolly was sent to survey the area and give a make, uh, make a small map he was from the cavalry author connolly was a cavalry man from calcutta and so he used traveled in course in horse he was traveling all over afghanistan calling himself a car horse trader and he changed his name from connolly to con ali so that he will not be disturbed by others you know he wanted to be known as a muslim himself the word being killed as a non believer the religion of afghans he used his name as con ali arthur connolly he gathered useful information with the area so that the physical map could be drawn from military use first he drew the map also the need for information i said that a member of the british cabinet in the beginning of 19th century edward law thought india could still be invaded the british should show there the asiatic power if india is to be invaded it will be won from the indus river side west western area he said so we must have enough information about the area for which a proper study should be undertaken it was said in the parliament itself need to know the place in the first anglo african afghan war between the british and the emirates of kabul the british installed its selected man as a king they won the war but they lost heavily during that time but they put on stage as their representative in 1839 the british indian force occupied kabul so now also in afghan these talks are being talked about it was one of the first major conflicts during the great game the 19th century competition for power and influence in central asia while they were establishing their rule in india they wanted to make sure from the western side nobody enters so they stopped everybody by having afghan in their control this was the background to start the measurement of the area under the control of the british they wanted to expand their empire for expansion information of the area is the base some proposals were already on board a madras was pioneer for almost all efforts of the english to establish in india and expand the area of control almost for everything in india was the first thing happened in it. even a first telephone was um, uh, tried in madras only Joseph Schwartzberg was a man who says even in the bronze age itself in this valley people knew how to make a cartography or what is cartography they knew what is drawing of a map and how to make so indians are already knowing about cartography he says use of large scale construction planes is special and all that was known in india with some regularity since vedic period he says Similarly, Susan Gole, an author of Indian Maps and Plans, she says from early time they knew about map. In 18th century, Kailas Temple at Ellore, of all of you know about it, especially you people have been. Some of them have been there. They could not have built it unless they knew the area properly for which maps must have been available. So it was not a big thing for India. however it was only during the company rule that the thought was given a fresh lease this was caused to british army officers who were interested in cartography the army officers who came to india were they were very, very much interested in cartography as i said in many things madras was the first the start of 19th century a proposal was put up to measure the shape of earth and map of india earth map you know we as sailors know that say we are sailing from uh, 
Bombay to London, we know we are not sailing in a straight line. We are going over a curve. So the distance in map between two points by measuring by divider is different from the actual distance drawn because it is in an arc. So shape of earth had to be known first. Then only the map of India can be drawn. A scientific India never attempted anywhere in the world the shape of the world to measure the distance. The whole measurement of the subcontinent started in the then Madras. The whole thing started here. And again, never attempted anywhere in the world. State of land measurement in 19th century. By, the, by then, less than one-eighth of the world had been accurately mapped. Only one-eighth of the world was mapped by then. In contrast, cartography was most advanced in India in the world by that time. Arthur Hinks, a well-known surveyor, wrote, No country in the world has contributed more to the advancement of geodesy as India. Geodesy is an important science, and Madras was a starting point for this in 1802. What is geodesy? Geodesy is the earth science of accurately measuring and understanding the earth's geometric shape, orientation in space, and gravitational field. Now we are all, everybody is flying from place to place, from say, from Madras, you fly direct to New York and all that. We know, but we don't know that we are not just across a map, one line we are flying. We are flying, first of all, we are ascending in the sky, and over which an arc. So this arc which is there is much longer than the arc which is on the earth itself. So actually we are traveling much more distance. All these distances have to be measured. And that depends on gravitational field also. This also incorporates studies of how these properties change over time and equivalent measurements for other planets. In fact, Difference in temperature makes a lot of uh, difference in all those things. So according to climate also, you have to see. The quest for knowledge started. To improve their control over a country, English started many of their first attempts in Madras. Thus astronomy, which uh, uh, Gopu is always talking about, land survey, seashore survey, all started in Madras. All the three started only in Madras especially astronomy. Seashore survey started by Michael Topping in 1788. He requested an IS assistant, Goldingham, a mathematician of repute. William Petrie had an 11-acre residence in Egmore uh, area. He set up his own observatory there. Government did not give money. He started his own observatory. That house was not enough, so he purchased a house in Nungambakam and set up his first telescope there, which is today also the observatory. It continues to be the same thing. A house was purchased soon, so the same house is current office for the observatory. Michael Topping is a great man by himself. He was the chief marine surveyor of the Fort St. George in Chennai responsible for founding the oldest modern technical school outside Europe. Today we are having Anna University. It was he, he is the father of that Anna University because he started a survey school which metamorphed it later into Gindi Engineering College and then to Anna University. Survey school was completed in 17th May 1794 with an initial intake of eight students only to start with. Goldingham is another character. He was the first official astronomer appointed in 1802. You see, all this thing happened during the start of 19th century, 1802. Goldingham was also an architect and surveyor who headed the Madras Survey School, which later grew into Gindi Engineering College and later into university. He became after topic. Goldingham was the first in the surveys of William Petty at his private observatory because he was a great mathematician and assisted Michael Topping. John Goldingham succeeded Michael Topping as astronomer posted in Madras. Same time, Lambden began the trigonometrical survey. Same time, almost three different people started three, three different surveys, almost at the same time. 
from 1787 itself observation were made taken eclipses of jupiter satellites mind you this is from a laboratory set up privately by a man and there is a beautiful this thing which i was telling you about there was one ragunath achari who was a waterman for them who was carrying water and when they were looking for retula one particular um, uh, substar or whatever it is they could not find it and this man found it by his telescope ragunath achari who was a waterman he had not gone to school even you will be surprised he was brought up and made something and we have made frias this is something which we cannot even do i mean today can you think of any top indian officer trying to support his waterman to become a member or something like that that an englishman did goldingham estimated the madras position it is goldingham who estimated the lat- uh, longitude uh, longitude of madras actually <coughs> and velocity of sound we all know <coughs> velocity of sound was first carried out i mean experiments were carried out in france but simultaneously at the same time the experiment was conducted in madras as well and this is the map available in that uh, magazine i got from you can see those two three lines differently the fort st george and st uh, this thing and the fort st george the line goes from there to fort st fort st george to st thomas mount down down line top line is somewhere near paris corner you see this guy goldingham waited for the first uh, cannon to blow the first you know at 8 p 8 am they used to fire the cannon at 8 am he fired the cannon there and he set up a um, uh, time there as to how many seconds it took for the sound to reach there and he connected and you will be surprised to know it was almost uh, three decimal places close to what france find out sound of speed by this method only goldingham did it and william petri in 1786 set up a private observatory as a ge- geographical and navigational aid in his residence in egmore his observatory and instruments later contributed the first modern observatory which is now nungambakam and even now that pillar is available there you can go there and see petri efforts led to the michael being appointed as astronomer of this observatory in sri rangapatnam fell after tipu sultan's law this in the fall of the uh, sri rangapatnam with the fall of sri rangapatnam and death of tipu sultan after the fourth mysore war the state was restored, uh, restored to wadayar clan with the control of the english that was the time we all know about history and even now if you go to museum you will find that uh, convalis statue in which you can see tipu sultan's two sons are being given as ransom for um, uh, to be paid by the, um, the um, government of tipu sultan to british it's also necessitated the major areas of revenue so now they had needed needed to know how much more area we got after the fall of serangapatnam velasli felt the need to measure the land these three streams of survey started at the same time one agricultural land survey by francis buchanan topographical survey by colin mckenzie and trigonometrical survey by william lambden colin mckenzie is a funny character who came to india for a different purpose altogether he was a mathematician himself and he was commissioned to do one particular work napier this you know napier who gave us the logarithm his great grandson came here as a governor and that's why that napier bridge is named after him so one of the ladies of the family asked colonel mckenzie to go to madras to find out about mathematics and she told him specifically 
that people in Madurai know more about Madra, uh, mathematics than anybody else, go to Madurai and learn about mathematics. She sent him all the way there. So Colonel Mackenzie came here for that purpose, though he is an army officer. He went to Madurai, fell in love with the old manuscripts he found there. And as you know, he collected the maximum number of manuscripts. Today, what we have, the collection of manuscripts are all due to him. But for him, we would not have had so much of history. There's only, unfortunately, one picture of Colonel Mackenzie available with, in Mysore, you know, with Lakshmanaya and his brother standing. See those two, Lakshmanaya and his brother standing with Colin Mackenzie. He began an extensive survey of regions and sources, diverse as Kadapa, Kernul, Nolamala. Just imagine those days riding on horseback, going on different places. He submitted for the first time a general map of the Hyderabad Nizam's dominions. He is the first one to do that. Thus, in no small measure, it was his intimate knowledge of the geography of South India that won the British their military successes, among other factors. It was Lieutenant Colonel William Lambton, again an army officer, who first proposed a trigonometry. Now we are coming to our subject, trigonometrical survey. He began a triangulation survey in 1800-1802 to measure the width of the peninsula of India between Madras and Mangalore. After finishing, his, he continued the surveys northwards for more than 20 years. He died during the course and the work was continued by George Everest. We all know about George Everest and this was the Lambton. The trigonometrical principle itself is very simple, as you all know. A baseline is drawn, AB is carefully measured, the internal angles of X and Y are determined, the unknown distance of AC and BC can be calculated, and on one of the side, which becomes the base of the second triangle, another triangle is built, to which base again another triangle is built, and then triangles go one after other through. So the measurement is, the smaller the triangle, more correct is the measurement. But then one make it very small. You have to be reasonably big enough to know. And you are doing on an area where the building, temples, lakes, everything. So you have to know where exactly you are doing what. Spherical excess. This is an important point in geography. A strange phenomena is the spherical excess. On a plane area, the three angles of a triangle when added is 180 degrees. If you draw a triangle on a curved angle and measure the angle and add together, it will be more than 180 degrees. So this is called the spherical axis. On a curved surface, this is more than 180. Therefore, to keep the error low, this triangle has to be as small as possible so that the spherical error doesn't agree. The selection of a base is again a big problem. He chose two points for baseline, one at a flat plain four miles from seashore and near the present race course. And the other at the St. Thomas Mount. Mind you, for the entire country's trigonometrical survey, baseline was this. From here, the whole measurement started. He measured this distance of 7.5 miles accurately with a 100-foot steel chain. Mind you, one thing you must remember, 100-foot steel chain is the, is the standard measurement for any, any measurement in land survey. Do you know the problem is uh, in the chain? You can't hold it straight line. The weight is so much that, you know, what is called a cloth line theory, you know, when you put a wet towel or a cloth line, it takes a dip, no matter how you pull, because according to trigonometry, the force required to make it straight will be infinite. You can't just straighten it. So with this steel chain, it is more difficult. So they had to raise a pole and lower weight so that they can make it as straight as possible. 100 foot is the minimum chain that was available. With this knowledge of geodesy and ability, geodesy and ability to use a theodolite, he set about this task. Geodesy and theodolite. The Earth's surface is curved and therefore corrections are required in calculating 
by using an optical instrument called theodolite, comprising a mounted telescope on a rotatable horizontal and vertical planes, angles in surveying can be measured accurately. In rotating table where you can rotate all these. The great theodolite, it is called the great theodolite. This was called the great theodolite weighing half a ton and needed men to carry it as carting in a bullock cart to damage the instrument. It was used almost for 20 years before getting replaced. Some episodes during the travel are quite interesting. Survey of India headquarters has that theodolite even today in their museum, along with a 100 foot steel chain that was used by this guy. This is the theodolite. And you see the top, you can see a, um, a telescope and various other instruments in there. And similarly, there is a zenith sector. The zenith sector is a sort of a vertical telescope, which is mounted in a frame like this. An upward facing telescope with accurate angle measurement sails. A star close to the zenith of known declination from the pole star was used to determine the latitude. This is for sailors, it's a very simple thing to understand, but for others, it will be a little difficult. Most of the distances are starting from Chola's navigation. They called it Viral Kanak. You'll be surprised. It's called Viral Kanak. Even now, it is known as Thambrul, but the Thambrul itself comes from the Viral Kanak. And for Viral Kanak, for navigation, they put the thumb on their nose and raise their first little finger and see the star. They call, if they see it differently, they raise the second finger, then the third finger. These three are different heights, you know. So once they see the star through any of that, then which viral is the correct thing? From that, they will know the angle, azimuth angle. Today, what is done through a quadrant. So this kind of work they were doing. During the process to get better locations, temple tops were used as nodal points. On one such occasion, Tanjur Big Temple Gopuram was used to mount the theodolite. While hauling up the theodolite atop the Gopuram at 200 feet height, the rope snapped and the instrument was damaged by falling down. And government refused to give any money for repairs. So Lambden repaired it at his own cost. Because the government refused to give him any money. It took him six weeks to repair the instrument. Funds were crunch. Lambden had to face shortage of funds. Many problems he had. Lambden was so keen that he spent from his own pocket and most of the time as he was committed to the job. His associate who later succeeded him, George Everest, was equally devoted and they would work with devotion. The... To engage Colossus, they used their money. Britain refused to give money, saying that Indians don't know anything about this job. But these people know that Colossus had more idea than others. So they used their own money. Peninsular triangulation from Madras to Bangalore. The first one you can see from that corner that is Madras. This corner is Bang uh, Mangalore. We measured it and completed it. When he completed it, he found one very strange phenomena. What was shown originally by maps which were drawn earlier and his measurement, he found there was shortage about 100 miles or so. So while calculating the area, British Samrajyam came down by several square miles, which they were not very happy about. The party reached Bangalore by several calculations. It was established the work was accurate and the theoretical calculation showed only an error of four inches only, which you cannot even today imagine. Here he made um, another seven miles new baseline that took him 49 days. The exact position of this baseline was determined by astronomical calculation. Each time the sea made sure that there is no accumulation of errors. Western Ghat range from Bangalore, Lambdon proceeded to Western Ghats and then down to Mangalore. It was about this time that Mackenzie was also going towards the same area for his topographical survey. And those started two years earlier, it was Lambdon who reached there first. 
This is paper he submitted. Second triangulation he started. You see how many triangles he has drawn. They went south. Recognition, he never got any recognition from his own government. His work was not even recognized by any scientific bodies of England. Only a letter of appreciation came from an astronomer, Neville Meskellin of London. Much later, all his works were published in six volumes. It was France first recognized his work that spurred London into action. He was declared fellow of the Royal Society next year after doing so much work. <laughs> Our people get doctorate very fast. Indians, therefore, government was not interested in the project. Withdrew all the military personnel who worked under Lambden. It was thought Indians were unsuited for the job, but they later proved otherwise. He employed some Anglo Indians from the survey school. The whole team under him looked at him as his as a father, actually. Now he worked northwards in 1815, reached Hyderabad. The workforce and the temp, uh, impl uh, implements they used, this was the type of workforce, and this is how they were carrying. You can see that Zenith sector is being carried by some man. The triangles, painstakingly, Lambden proceeded with the triangles from south to north. Young Captain George Everest became his assistant. Lambden was sick and died on Jan, Jan 28, 1823, on road to, heading to Nagpur. And these poor fellows worked so hard. You see the number of triangles. It's available in record, actually. All the entire India is full of triangles. In the Hyderabad area, when they wrote the work by Lambden and Everest, Series of triangles they put. See their signatures at the bottom. They have even signed at the bottom. One side is Lambton on the left, and the right hand side you can see George Everest. Lambton was remembered much later in St. Thomas Mount. Now there is a bronze bust of him erected unveiled by Surveyor General of India, Nog, on 17, 2003 only, not before that. It was the bicentennial celebration of this rhythmical survey. George Everest, a British surveyor and geographer, surveyor general of India from Sonsu time, the highest mountain peak in India is named after him. For the, you'll be no, you will be surprised. No, he never even saw that peak, but though it is named after him. Surveyor General of India in 1830, retiring in 1840, he felt very sick and returning to England due to failing health. He was known as never rest because he never rested in his life. George Everest never saw the peak. He was responsible for hiring Andrew Scott Waugh, who made the first formal observation of the mountain, and Radhanath Sudkar. Radhanath Sudkar is the man who originally found Everest top who saw it, who calculated its height, actually. You will be surprised to know that Sikdar was a mathematician from north who calculated and gave the height of Mount Everest, which is absolutely close to, very close to even some uh, some meters only. You know, so well he calculated. In 1852, stationed at the survey headquarters in Dehradun, Radhanath Sikdar, an Indian mathematician and a surveyor from Bengal, was the first to identify Everest in the world's highest peak using the trigonometrical calculations. He showed it is the highest peak. The pundits, they were all called the pundits or explorers. The term pundit was first used to denote the native Indian surveyors used by the British secretly to explore regions in British India, because when they were going in the Kashmir area, they were spotted. To avoid that, they wanted Indians to do it, and they were to do secretly all this work. The Pandit was a code name for one of the first native explorers, Mon Noin Singh, who was originally a school teacher. As you know, all school teachers in the North were called Pandits those days. Like in Telugu area, whoever is teaching is called a Pantulu, you know, like that. This uh, pundit is a name for teacher. 
His accomplishment was so remarkable, the whole group of around 20 native explorers became known as pundits, who were all trained by him. Report showed that there were 21 pundits whose contribution was noteworthy. These pundits crossed India's northern borders many times to explore. Their journeys were remarkable. They worked with considerable risks. as discovery meant almost certain that if they were caught by some of those people local, they would have been killed actually. They traveled barefoot and established points for measurements. Radhanath Sikdar, a mathematician from Calcutta, born in October 1813. He studied mathematics at Hindu college and had a basic knowledge of English. A workaholic, Sikdar never married, dedicating his life to mathematical calculations. George Everest was always full of praise for the number of crunching genius. He was Sikdar. Similarly, Nain Singh. He was the first pundit, actually. Nain Singh. Indian explorers called pundits to explore the Himalayas. He surveyed the trade route through Ladakh to Tibet, determined the location and attitude of Lhasa. Uh, he was the first one to find out the altitude of Lhasa. He walked 1,580 miles and how they measured it by paces. His paces were noted and each counted and then that was called as miles. You know, I mean, they measured the paces accurately. Remembering then, the Department of Post Government of India launched a postal stamp on 27 June 2004, commemorating the establishment. And this is the stamp that was issued for both Nain Singh and Sikda as the great trigonometrical surveys. Thank you, all gentlemen and ladies. So nice of you to hear. I mean, uh, to have you hear me. And. Uh, Actually, I was thrilled when I studied this subject. I thought I should share with others. And a platform like this was given to me by PhD, for which I'm very happy to um, be here too with you all. Thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We can just have a few questions, if that's OK. Yes, yes. Uh, good, uh, uh, good evening, sir. So this was a very interesting uh, piece of, uh, like lots of information that we got. So one thing that I was uh, uh, wondering was, uh, uh, I don't remember the name correctly, but in the one of, in the one of the first few slides, you mentioned about someone who went to Madurai uh, uh, to look for all the manuscripts and other. Ah, uh -huh, McKinsey. So Colin McKenzie. McKenzie. So you you mentioned that he was the. If not for him, we wouldn't have gotten so many other uh, manuscripts. But uh, we do have our uh, uh, Tamil Tata and uh, Swaminatha here. Him who was all who is also credited to given to have given us all our manuscripts. So I was just wondering, are they are these the different ones where mathematics was written or? I'll, I'll tell you the difference. Both are extremely. That's a very nice question, and I'm thankful to you. At least such inquisitive minds you are having. That is great by itself. To start with. Number one, who is how many of their manuscripts were all about the Tamil literature only, nothing beyond that. No wonder nobody can beat him in finding that manuscript and all that. But what Colin McKenzie did, he didn't go looking for a manuscript. See the difference between Uwe Somanadayar and uh, Colin McKenzie is Uwe Somanadayar went looking for a manuscript. When you go searching for a, say you have kept your watch somewhere in the table, you go looking for the watch, you'll only look for the watch, nothing else. Anything else also, wait. accidentally you can find something else, but you are not interested. But it was not so in the case of Colin McKenzie. He saw suddenly one manuscript, he started looking at it. Anything he found on the way, he collected. His collection is supposed to be the world's largest collection, divided into three parts, one sent to Calcutta, one sent to Madras, and one sent 
and the madras things was in madras oriental manuscript now i believe they are in another i i don't know but it has helped me a lot during my madras but no research i have seen some other one so you see the difference so we in so we as on here is a constant whereas this man collected which would be written manuscripts anything other than copper plates so many things are connected thank you very much for a very nice class So, so the minimum length available you said it was very hard to put it up stretch into straight line why couldn't they have kept it on the land and made it straight <laughs> again another wonderful question you see you see because it's in the coastline there are no that curves is. or bumps also i'll tell you i'll tell you the reason if i give you a scale to measure some portion how will you measure if it is straight place you will put like this isn't it between point a and point b Supposing you had up and down here, how will you measure it? No, no. I am asking you. If you had up and down, how will you measure it with the scale? You are not measuring it only on the cross lines. All the entire England has to be measured into triangles. There are lakes, there are rivers, there are hills, trees, everything. So you can't put something straight line. You have to raise one pole there, one pole there, and put the chain across to find the difference. <laughs> Another Colin McKenzie in the making. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for the talk. This how did you manage the year? Hundred feet is the minimal this talk is said, but we are talking about a. very large distance so and at some point you said that there was a 4 inch uh, accurate measurement so how did they manage the error how did they ensure that errors didn't creep in everything is not measured okay everything is not measured by line only a baseline is measured once a baseline is known some spot you know like gopuram or something like that it's not meant by only views yeah it has to be measured by um, astronomical calculations by showing the stars position calculated the measures in many places it's not always easy to measure every place in but that is how you make one triangle and when you start going up you start going up one by one you will uh, be able to do it for into there in a huge line of uh, miles together You can imagine from that how well they have calculated. Astronomical calculations are very, very accurate actually. Yeah, but see now we are flying by plane, going by ship. Astronomical calculation, correct? They they measure exactly. I mean, a plane taking off from here to New York, from Madras to New York, otherwise may land up in London. You know, if you don't know the correct way. So all these things are done. astronomically so stellar navigation which is done but it is also done where it is necessary by actually physically measuring only where it is necessary thank you this is speed along the internet point this may not be uh, uh, relevant it may be only parallel my grandfather was one of the pioneering pioneering uh, geologist those days and one of the thing he went to uh, places like kabul he'll be surrounded by decoits and then he had to negotiate with them telling them if i make this this thing you will get better employment because we are trying to uh, uh, bring roads to you from uh, that was a lie of course and he used to uh, relate the amount number of Uh, problems that he, he uh, used to meet. If he had met that number of uh, problems that he, he uh, used to meet, if he had met that kind of problem, I'm sure these people have definitely uh, definitely uh, that uh, after Kennedy himself, as you said, he went as a horseman, and in one place he was asked all the questions about horse. know about horses 
to prove that he was really horse merchant and not come for way in the place. So they were all doing like to take a lot of risks they were doing. And if detected, certain death was sure. So they made all this. That was a sacrifice. Uh, the sacrifice the budget, definitely, see, definitely, definitely. That definitely. has to, you know, we have to factor in that when you admire them. Definitely. Hello. Uh, hi, sir. My name is Murali. Very inspiring talk. And I think even the work is very inspiring. Can we uh, look at the kind of work that we have done and people who have participated and kind of repeatability based initiative across India, something completely different from what we Unfortunately, the problem is uh, you have to reinvent, you know, <laughs> you have to know about what is it. So, so when the basics are available, you work on basics. That is normal science. Any scientist, any mathematician, or a mathematician, they don't go to the base, you know, they've gone on a proven subject and start on that because if you have to go to the base to start all this thing, it will never happen also. And today, the world is totally changed. If the amount of the knowledge that is available on place, location, to the least minute in a last minute or the lowest fraction of a minute in uh, degrees I'm talking about, everything is known so clearly. So what is uh, not necessary, people don't try. The one thing you must remember always, man tries to do something only when something is not known. A housewife does not wait want to try to make a new type of idli. She makes something new, which is a different dish altogether. So we have to think like that only because it is. But as to the relevance of your question, whether it will be possible today, it will be very difficult because nobody is going to, I mean, I can't come from Adair to here, you know, thinking of any other method coming by car itself is took one hour for me. So we can't go back in time. We have to admit that we are here and we have to go with it. Let me, uh, let me just fo uh, follow up on that thought, sir. You know, uh, myself and Ramana have talked about something like taking a, a, a tree survey, you know, we named the project Tree Hugger. We wanted to look at uh, the tree survey in a geographical area, thereby trying to get some environmental number through that. And in order to do that, we can get innovative about, uh, you know, carrying a camera or carrying sensors in bikes or cars, you know, there are different ways of doing that. And by that, you may be able to find some additional nuances about the cities, about the town. You know, those kinds may be possible, we thought. Along that line, I had that question. No, your idea is correct. That's all. That okay. is the principle of any advanced studies. You know. Thank you very much. See, one of the things that you could possibly do is, uh, one is to sh theor theoretically teach how the triangulation works. Now, that is, uh, uh, that's obvious. And how, therefore, you can, see, it is like, where the line given the finite element method, given a thing you are creating, uh, uh, triangulation. Triangulation is fairly well known. We have to teach uh, what triangulation is and how you cover a given uh, uh, area. But today, if I want to measure distance between, let's say, uh, trees in a, uh, a region, let's say I have to create a map of trees. The base map is there, but I have got to place every single tree and then you maybe, you know, you create another layer of the tree map, which will give you 
the details about the tree and then you know, i want to go from one tree to the other tree of the same type or of different types etc it's possible to use different kinds of sensors uh, different equipments to get exact location today gps gives you fantastic thing but what you can build on top of it would be far more interesting So, um, so during McKinsey's time, uh, Madurai seems to have had a reputation of being a center of mathematical learning. But do we know about any specific mathematicians from the time, whether it had an institutional character like the Kerala School, for example, or had they left any texts which uh, we can learn from on what the state of development of mathematics was all the mathematicians were from different places and all that like um, um, Lilavati being taught by Bhaskar Charya and then those things are different but what was thought by McConnelly to be this thing was when Napier had made the logarithm and did that one at that point of time for that type of mathematics what is available in Madurai she seemed to have heard that Madurai has got the best mathematician and so she is not he visited even India. So she doesn't know where Madurai is also. So she had told um, uh, this uh, man to go to Madurai and find out from the mathematicians. Especially she used the word someone. As far as I am concerned, I don't know any great mathematicians for Madurai lived or even anybody. I mean, I, I have no idea. Because we all the mathematicians, all these people can tell you much better than me, are all from different areas, not from Madurai. Madurai being the oldest city, maybe she thought there may be somebody there because Madurai was a known as known as the oldest city. That's all. Thank you very much. I think we have passed beyond time. So I'll take leave of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of our younger speakers to give a talk on our affection to the speaker today. Thank you very much. And I am very happy to be donating this back to THT. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. God bless you. You are very good persons. Thank you. Yeah, so we'd like to thank we'd like to thank Mr. Nasaya for a wonderful lecture. I think it was an evening well spent. It was an excellent introduction to both uh, a very interesting geographical project and also a very fitting way to celebrate Madras month. Uh, what more could we ask for uh, to start off our sixth year of lectures? We hope to have uh, several more uh, lectures uh you know uh, in live we we don't know how it's going to work out in the near future we've been doing online for two years i was commenting what a nice auditorium it is and all that so we need to see people again uh, uh so i just want to add one or two notes to what he said because he's he spoke about this exact same subject uh, so he skipped that in that slide because there are some problems so i just want to mention that the mountain actually was called gauri shankar and uh, later on it was called Everest. So I would like to ask uh, our one of our founders, Rajagoparan, to give a vote of thanks for the program. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gopu. To Narsaya sir for this uh, wonderful uh, session, uh, fitting uh, uh, opening, beginning for our sixth year. Um, we can't thank you enough. We also thank uh, Sastra Satsang for uh, giving us uh, this wonderful hall. 
Um, so we hope to have uh, more uh, live programs, uh, as Gopu mentioned. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll have more sessions uh, in person, uh, maybe at this hall. Uh, so we will um, keep you all posted about our upcoming programs. And thank you all. Thank you, the uh, audience, for uh, showing up uh, in, in, in person. I know this is uh, after March uh, 2020. This is our uh, first um, live uh, in-person event more than uh, two and a half years uh, uh, of gap. Uh, thank you all. Uh, we look forward to seeing, all, seeing you all again uh, in our next uh, uh, talk. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, this program, uh, yeah, so you, many of you might be uh, watching this uh, live on YouTube. Um, and uh, the um, uh, what's, you know, we will update uh, about the next month's uh, lecture in our WhatsApp groups and as well as on our uh, Facebook page. Um, thank you all so much and have a good evening.